welcome you to our third grade coaching session this morning. Before we get started, if you are here with me live on Friday morning, make sure that you type your name up in the poll in the upper right hand corner so I can send you a free book for your library. And I really do appreciate you joining me this morning. Also, uh, below that are some files that you are welcome to download. A couple things I found on Pinterest. Uh, fun for nonfiction reading, um, an on-demand observation chart that you can download and use in your classroom when you start doing some writing, and a copy of this PowerPoint if you would like it. So all you need to do is click on where it says download files and you can have access to those. We'll get started. All right, so our nonfiction reading unit starts November 4th and it's lasting for three weeks. And we're really kind of excited about it because we're moving from literary nonfiction into just straight old nonfiction. And so your students should be able to make some really good um, inferences and have some good conversations about the difference between them. Um, and so we're welcoming in nonfiction. Off the bat, I want to remind you of some of the TEKS for third grade. It's students analyze, make inferences, and draw conclusions about expository text and provide evidence from text. And I underlined a couple of these words because I just wanted to call your attention to them. First of all, make inferences. So there again is that famous inference. We're doing it now in nonfiction. And also about drawing conclusions and finding evidence. If you think about that, then think about um, you know how someone's life um, kind of uh, made them who they are when you were reading uh, literary nonfiction. Now in nonfiction, they need to be able to go and um, find that evidence to make some conclusions about things. So if you are reading a book about um, drilling oil in Alaska, um, have students thinking about what kind of conclusions, what kind of um, things will happen because of that. So really get them thinking about not just that it's a bunch of facts in a nonfiction book, but kind of the effects on everyone. The specific TEKS um, are identifying details and facts that support the main idea. So please make sure that you're continuing to talk about main idea. Um, kind of ask them, not so much like what lesson is learned, but, okay, so what is the overall reason why this book was um, written? Um, 13B is drawing conclusion with text evidence. So please make sure that you're practicing going back into the text and finding it. Cause and effect relationships among ideas in text. So uh, thinking about why things are happening and the different ideas in this text. Also, the text features. Locate information. Verify predictions. So that's a big one in nonfiction. Here's some star stems. You want to make sure that you've got these. And as you're teaching nonfiction, even in your read alouds or in your mini lessons, as you're conferring and having conversations with kids, use some of these star stems um, with nonfiction. So what sentence best supports the idea? So have them coming up with an idea and then have them go and find the reason why. What happened to whatever, when, whatever happens, so again, cause and effect. And the author includes headings in bold print. This one was about um, some of the text features of nonfiction. So talk to students and say, hey, y'all, why did the author decide to put this photograph in here? Or why did the author include this map in nonfiction um, to kind of tie it together? Make sure that you're tying all of the media and the text features with the actual text to understand why the author chose to put those in. A couple things I want you to remember. Please, please, please keep practicing that summary. We looked over the um, beginning DPM, and I was looking at, um, especially in the expository, the nonfiction part, and again, kids are having an awful lot of trouble with summary. So again, that's just something that you really need to be modeling all the time. Model it from from books, model it from your poetry, model it from the day you had, model how you can summarize the morning announcements. Um, just try and show them as many examples of summary as you can and get them doing it. Also, when you're looking through the reading unit, flag 21, 22, and 23 because they have some really good um, information about teaching summary. Also, here's a little trick. In second grade in iExplore, the second 
time they do nonfiction and research, which is in the spring, I think it's in March in second grade, there were a whole bunch of brand new mini lessons t um, written this summer for nonfiction. And they are fantastic. So um, if you have the chance, and you do, um, in your free time, uh, go to iExplore, second grade, reading, and go to their unit called Nonfiction and Research and look through some of those mini lessons. Pull those out for your kiddos and um, use some of those for inspiration for nonfiction because it's worth it. Also, I wanted to remind you, reading materials, use KidBiz as a resource in your room during this nonfiction unit. If you have to print out some uh, articles, put them in a plastic uh, holder and let kids read from them that way to have in your library. Or you can use them as your read aloud. Uh, you have a great, great resource with KidBiz. Also, send an email this morning to your librarian and say, hey, we're starting this nonfiction unit. Can you pull me some books for my library? And have those books available in your room. Or maybe ask um, her if there's something special that she can do in the library uh, to help your kids with nonfiction. Introductions to the nonfiction or noticing books that they haven't noticed before, those kind of things. So put that on your to-do list for this morning and put a please, please, please and a happy face and, and get her help for that. Um, also, I noted that um, there are some great resources on Pinterest or some free ones on Teachers Pay Teachers. Just type in nonfiction third grade and a ton of information comes up. So that's a great resource for you. Those of you that are using CAFE in your classroom, notice lots of people have those uh, letters up, C-A-F-E, in their classroom, but we're kind of... Um, we're, we're struggling with getting the conferring going, so I gave you a couple of ideas um, that you can do with nonfiction. In comprehension, using text features. Absolutely, they can do that. In accuracy, trade a word, guess a word. That makes sense. So getting kids that new vocabulary and understanding the accuracy in the, in the reading. Um, fluency, read text as the author would say it, conveying meaning. Talk to your students about the difference in the voice of fiction versus nonfiction. You know, you can remind them that, you know, in nonfiction, they're kind of teaching you something. And so have them put on their teacher voice when they're teaching um, and reading that nonfiction to get them to hear the difference between it. And in expanding vocabulary, using those pictures, illustrations, and diagrams. So here's some great ideas for you for your cafe integration. I wanted to give you some um, websites that have some great ideas. Um, this second website here um, has great nonfiction read aloud ideas. And they give like a little blurb at the bottom of some um, places that you can go. So again, if you download this or if you just want to go to this blog.stenhouse.com and type in nonfiction in their search field, uh, it's got some great ideas for you. All right, so prompt-based personal narrative writing. Again, model, model, model. Please make sure that you are modeling for those third graders. Get yourself some chart paper and, and do some writing in front of them. Let them see your thinking and your writing. Um, we are really excited when I've been going into third grade classrooms and seeing teachers with their own writer's notebook and writing nonfiction or writing fiction, but let them see your own personal narrative um, so they can see it in action. Also, an idea from a teacher is that she gives them a different prompt every day and then they get one minute of talk time of how they would answer that prompt. So it's just, again, giving them that practice of orally rehearsing a prompt. And um, it was a great little idea. She used um, pictures. She used music. Uh, she even had a scent that she sprayed. Uh, it was um, apple crisp scent. And then they had to talk about how they would um, respond to that. So just ideas about personal narratives and giving them all different kinds of prompts to write to. Remember that we're trying to do some on-demand prompts. So basically what you do is you give students a prompt and you see where they are as writers. This is a great way for you to look over their writing, see how they're doing as writers, and then it gives you a starting point of um, where your instruction can begin. And then remember the on-demands you can also do um, at the end of a unit 
to show growth and to show the kids how much uh, better they are as writers and how they've developed as writers. So please use those on demands. Also remember I put, said that I put the on demand observation chart. When you give them an, ob, um, an on demand, pay attention to how long it takes them to get going writing or coming up with ideas or how fast they are writing it and is it very clear in that short amount of time. So use those for your advantage and to, to help your students. Quick writes. Remember, you can do quick writes any time of the day. Take two minutes, let them write to the prompt. Again, here's a whole bunch of ideas of things that you can write about. Um, have, the, have fun with writing. Get the pressure off them and just give them the chance to be successful in writing. Remember, a great thing that you can do for a quick write, have them count the words. And then the next time you do a quick write, say, OK, uh, boys and girls, I just want you to write five more words than you wrote the last time. And then they can have that success. Um, so use those quick writes. Also, hey, you know, if you want to talk to your math partner or if you want to talk to the science partner you got, um, ask them if you can have, you know, the students can do some one-minute quick writes before they're leaving their classroom just to get them writing about what they're learning and what they know. Wanted to remind you that you have a great source in WriteSource. You've got an email recently about how you can log in to WriteSource and use it in your classroom. And if you haven't taken a chance to look at this, go for it. There is a section called Grammar Snap. I was visiting yesterday and looking at it. It has many lessons about all different kinds of things, nouns and verbs and adjectives and all kinds of things for revising and editing. There's a little video that you can watch. If you're using Brain Pop, it's kind of similar to that. Not as cute, actually, but hey, you know, it's another resource for you. And there is also a discovery game where you um, play almost video game-ish, and then a couple seconds into the game you stop, you answer a little question about grammar, and if you get it right, you get more points, and then you get to go back to the game. How cool is that? Um, so just to remind you that you've got that resource available to you, log in, give it a try, and see what you think. If you have any ideas or questions, you can always contact me. I'd be glad to help. One quick pedagogy tip. Um, we are trying to encourage students to have conversations. And so during your mini lesson, you want to give them the opportunity to turn and talk to their partners. Try and limit the hand raising and calling on one at a time. Um, try and, and make it through a whole mini lesson without having anybody raise their hand. Give them a chance to turn and talk and answer the question so that you get more students engaged, more students talking to each other. Um, if you find yourself asking a question during your mini lesson, as soon as you see those hands go up, remind yourself, oh, turn to a partner and tell them what you think. Let's get those kids really engaged and get everybody a chance to talk. Um, it'll get the wiggles out of them, too, if they get to move around and talk to each other for a couple of seconds while they're on the floor. So give that a try real quick. If you ever have any questions about third grade curriculum or have a suggestion, please feel free to email me. I'd love to hear from you. And again, if you are attending our session, make sure you signed in at the top so I can send you your book. And I hope you have a great time with nonfiction and prompt-based personal narrative. Have a great day, everyone.